One of the first things I did my freshman year was sign up for clubs. At the end of my freshman orientation, there was an activity fair. So after an early morning, some questionable experiences and new people, the activity fair was a breath of fresh air. Walking into the library, it was a busy scene. The room was lined with booths and students doing demos, speeches, basically anything to get your name down at their station. I was amazed by all the different things that I could try. There were the classics like music, sports, and student government, but there were things I never knew about. Entertaining people in a student-run theater program, testing my intelligence in academic competition, or even immersing myself in the many cultural programs. The greatest appeal is that these were all student-run organizations. Going into this orientation, I knew that clubs and extracurriculars were a great way to make new connections, especially starting at a new school with more people than I've ever been used to. So that day, I signed up for a couple clubs. I didn't know then how important extracurriculars were in the long term of my future until I had my first meeting with my counselor a couple of months later. I learned that extracurriculars are a huge part of my college applications and that they can provide skills, experiences, and connections that can be useful in my future. I can say that this is pretty true for me as a senior who's been through the college application process, but as someone who's been through a job application process. I've met people who've revolved their entire college application and major around things that they did in high school. So when I heard this from my counselor, I took it pretty literally. So, in my first semester of high school, I took seven different classes and six different extracurriculars, including an instrument and a sport. Whoa. <laughs> Looking at the schedule now, I do not know what I was thinking. Because of how far I live from my school, I ended up staying at school between 9 and 13 hours a day, four days a week for a couple of months. Physically, I wasn't getting as much sleep because I was inflating the work I needed to do once I got home. Mentally, I was gaining resentment, not only towards the things that I needed to do, but towards the things that I loved to do. In my next semester, I quickly adjusted my schedule, but I'm not the only student who does this. Students all over the world are engaging in rigorous classes, extracurriculars, while keeping up social and personal lives. We learn that these aspects contribute to a successful high school career. But why? Why are students filling up their plates so much? Why are students pushing themselves into a wall? It was found in the 2016 to 2017 school year that graduation rates in public high schools reach a high of 84.8%, and this is the highest it's ever been since it was first recorded. Now, this is great. It means that students are taking their education seriously enough to move to the next level. It also means that life after high school has become that much more competitive, especially in the realm of higher education, where attending a college or university in the US is not only a burden on many students and families, it's a sacrifice. It begs the question on whether college is a worthy investment, because one of the leading causes of debt in the US is student loan debt. Over 44 million university graduates will graduate with an average of $37,172 in student loans. The US holds about $1.5 trillion in loans. What do you think the average net worth of a college graduate is? 5,000? 10,000? In 2018, the average net worth of the most recent graduating class was negative $39,984. Hold on, because I'm not done. Because college admissions is not only a system that is a marketable business, but it's riddled with corruption. There's test preparation courses for college entrance exams. There's college admission specialists that know what to put on an application or an in interview. There's even financial aid consultants, which ironically cost a pretty penny for being around to save money. And this is a big business because the average cost of these experts is around $200 an hour. It really sheds a light on how the college admission system is a gamble. Last month, we saw one of the largest college admissions fraud cases brought to the public. About 50 people paid up to $500,000 to secure spots at elite schools. Even with all these faults, society still values an education. And in places like the US, education is locked behind a wall.
I could go on for hours talking about how this system needs to change, but what we really need to ask is what has come from it. What are the effects, the consequences? Because these things weigh. According to a study done by the Pew Research Center, 70% of high school age kids say that depression and anxiety is a major problem for them. And this does not include the many cases that go unreported each year. However, the last couple of years, students have lost on average about two hours of sleep and how sleep loss can contribute to further sleep disorders, depression, mood changes, and more. How? Between 2006 and 2016, suicide rates in high school age kids has risen to 70%. These things weigh. I think back to those nights, sitting in a lobby all by myself, wondering why I was here, and I probably couldn't answer that to this day. Education is changing. Standards are rising. So how can students adapt? How can they rise with the standards? Going back to my freshman orientation, there was something simple and useful I completely ignored that has made a big change in my life. It had a green glossy cover with spiral bound to keep enough, with enough space to keep track of my dates and my tasks. Yes, I'm talking about a planner. I started keeping a planner in my sophomore year of high school, and it was like a light went off in my head because I started seeing all the unnecessary pressures I was putting on myself. It was the start of a new interest that has grown to be a big part of my mindset as a student, as well as my mindset as a functioning person. Organization and planning skills are necessary in life, yet has gained an identity of being unapplicable unnecessary and almost naturalized in some people more than others, that you're born picture perfect and organized. Well, I hate to break it to you. Organization is not a natural trait. It's a skill. Like reading, like writing, it's something that is learned and it's something that's specific to you. Think about how many things that you do in a day. Are they the same every day? Are they the same as the person next to you? Probably not. There's no one way to organize everything and everyone. It's a personal skill. But let's take a step back and answer why organization skills are necessary. The brain most commonly learns through association. For example, I like dark chocolate because to me it tastes sweet. But for some other people, dark chocolate may taste bitter. These types of association helps us um, learn our taste, create our personality. This type of learning was discovered by Ivan Pavlov in the famed experiment, Pavlov's Dogs. This type of association is how we also retain information. So what do you think happens when you're constantly bombarded with new information to retain, like a student? Ever wonder or ask why teachers advise you to take notes during class? It's not just extra work. The physical association of the physical act of writing and the mental act of writing helps retain information more than passively listening or watching a lecture. Another example of this is journaling. Regular stream of, conscious, stream of consciousness journaling is proven to improve memory, communication, as well as reflective skills. These two, organization and journaling, go hand in hand because they both stem from an intimate type of recording that is basis in self-improvement, learning your history, and improving it as you go. I've been journaling since I was a kid, and when I started planning, I took the same skills from it, taking my history and learning from it. A planning system I truly believe in is the bullet journal system. The bullet journal system was created by Ryder Carroll and has fueled social media and new markets with its message. It promotes a personalized planning system suited to your needs as in life, as well as your mindset. He summarizes the system in three sentences. Track the past, order the present, and design the future. At first, I didn't really think that I could bullet journal. Why? I am severely artistically challenged. And the reason why is when you type in bullet journal into social media or into Google, you see these beautifully crafted pieces of art that are also used to organize exhibit A. It's a little intimidating, <laughs> but I realized that this was an end result of the system, not the beginning. The more I learned about the bullet journal system, I learned that it was about self-care and about self-recognition. 
because when there are things right in front of you, it's hard to deny all the faults and errors. So, right before my junior year, I sat down and mapped out everything that I wanted to do. And I knew to be successful, I had to make some changes. So, I ended up giving up my sport, which is one of my biggest commitments, because I knew I was filling time with things that I did not need. It was more than just relieving myself and giving myself a peaceful mindset. It was having a focus and intention. The bullet journal system is varied and vast and has different takes on it all over the world. But I figured out a way to adapt the system into my mindset as a student, as a leader, and as the creator of my own website, The Three Bs. Taking the time, to, taking the time in yourself is an intention to grow. It's an investment in yourself. Not accounting for the unique personalities in our school system is not only cheating students out of their potential, it's taking away their chance at greatness. So you might be wondering, with all I've talked about organization, what's my own plan? How do I organize? I have a system that I like to use because I've seen it not only work for me, but for other people. So first, take out a piece of paper and something to write with. I prefer paper to a screen because there's a certain permanence around a piece of paper and ink. Then write down everything. Keep it simple, line by line. Write down all your dates, all your tasks, all your thoughts. It's called a brain dump. It's a moment in time for you to relieve everything in your head so you can start making necessary decisions. Once you have your list, we need to divide it up, make it a little bit more easy to see. I like to use three or four general sections. For example, school slash work, personal life, and health. Using broad sections allows for more specification later on. Assign either a color or a symbol to each of these sections. For example, a star for school and work, a square for personal life, and a circle for health. Go down your list and mark each item with one of these symbols or colors. Once you have your list divided, we need to prioritize. Prioritizing is a skill that takes experience and is morally specific to you, but there are two general questions that help a lot. Is this urgent or is this imp important? The reason I ask these questions is because it highlights what's necessary of your mind and of your time. For example, it's important that I finish my English paper, which is due next week, but the urgency of my math homework outweighs the importance of my English paper. Go down your list and mark each item with either an I for important, a U for urgent, or an IU for important and urgent. Or don't mark it at all, another thing to knock off your list. Once your list is divided and prioritized, we need to organize. Start off with a daily to-do list. It has everything that you need right in front of you. Once you get comfortable keeping a daily to-do list, start with a little bit more general and overview planning with a weekly planner or a monthly planner and go on and learn as you go on of what you like. For more information on my planning system and some trip, tips and tricks, please check out my website and my Instagram at the3bs19. Now I hope I've inspired some new organizers and I hope I've incited some new motivation because that's what it is for me. Every Sunday morning at my desk with my notebook and my pens and a good cup of coffee. I'd like to say that even if you plan things down beautifully to the last second, it's not about the plan, because sometimes it doesn't go according to. It's all for you. It's about taking the time to make sense of your life, of your interests, of your time. Because taking this time is an intention in, your, is an intention in growth. It's, and having this intention to grow leads to greatness, which starts right up here. I'd like you to thank you for your time for listening.